Hello, powerful one. Welcome to this edition of Inner Growth with Osezwa LMA. Do you have any idea why you are always in a low vibrational frequency? We all know that our lives are frequency determined. The value of our lives is determined by the frequency that we occupy. Now, you have the frequency of shame where you feel that you are not worthy, you are not good enough that you really can't become certain things unless somebody comes to carry you and help you to become that thing. Where your capacity to be is limited by your understanding of doing it. You just feel that because of your background, of your history, therefore you cannot become certain things. Because you are a black man, because you are a Latina, Latino or Latin X, because you are Indian, because whatever or because you are a man from certain parts of the world, because you are a woman, you really cannot. You see, there's a new thing that's going on in town now that women are finding it easier to rise in corporate Nigeria. It is easier for a woman to become materially successful in Nigeria because they just lean on men. What men spend money on, like dating, women don't spend money on dates. Therefore, women are more likely to succeed. And that because women, they carry certain assets that men are interested in corporally, they are more likely to get the jobs of their dream than men. All of these mindsets are all indicative of the frequency that we are occupying. Always think that we will get certain things on the basis of our material, social, environmental value. That is a lie. Okay, your value is intrinsic. Your value is as you think. Then you leave the level, you're talking to the come to the level of anger. People just are angry. Whatever does not connect with their expectations sparks anger out of them. Now, if you are consistently being angered by what people say, do, think around you, or people do not do or say around you, people's attitudes make you angry, then your capacity to cause change is reduced because you are still a victim. People are responsible for your mood. You can't be sad and expect to have good things. There's a video I did on happiness. I said that video is titled, Happiness is what you allow, not what you do or have. You have to let happiness happen. You have to give way to happiness. You have to allow it. But if you keep intervening between happiness and life, you will not have it. What is it? Happiness is the prerequisite for success. Happiness is a stream of life that connects you to the tributary of life, which is your higher self. And that tributary, which is your higher self, connects you to the ocean of all consciousness and of all powers and of all lives, which is the supreme source. You just have to be happy to experience the life more abundant. And the only way to do that is to leave anger and shame and blame alone. Then the next one is guilt. I have said it in one of my other videos now. I said that it's okay to do things that are not decent, that are not right, that are not okay. But go beyond them. When you keep allowing guilt to come, to attack you, from what you have done, you won't progress. And that will eat away at your happiness. It will crush your threshold of joy. And without happiness, there's no connection to power. Happiness is the current. It is the live wire that connects you to the sockets of your being. If you don't have it, you don't have you. And if you don't have you, you are not alive. And if you are not alive, you can't get anything. You can't cause anything. So, low frequency are expressed by all these moods, guilt, anger, shame, with all the paraphernalia of hate and the rest of them, comparisons and the rest of them. You need to cross this level. What actually puts us there? We'll come on them when we come back from this break. I am Osezwa Anthony Elimi Hey, You know me. I am in the game of helping you grow from inside out. That is the drill. Welcome back.
back. Okay, how do we solve the problem of low frequency? We first of all have to know why we occupy that position. One, mm, you have allowed your primordial definition to keep running your life. There is a way you have been defined by your background. Some of us are lucky to be born into an environment of abundance, into the environment of love, where parents pumped love on us and they made us number one in their reckoning. Because of that, we have always had this sense of value, that we are special, that the world serves us, that the world can wait for us. Oh goodness, that value has been inculcated in us. And if we were lucky enough to have parents that are balanced that said, just as the world can wait for you, so also can you wait for the world. Because when you are taking, you must be giving back. Like when you breathe. It's a give and take. Alright? So if you are getting from life, you must be giving the same value, if not higher values to life. So if the world can wait for you, you can wait even longer for the world. It's about service. So of us are brought up with that value system. So life is easier for us. But what about those of us who are not brought up that way? We were brought up by parents who shouted at us, who called us names, who told us things were not as easy as we thought they are. For example, I had a house help had this issue. The children just came back from school happy. I'm talking about children that are seven and five. They came back from school. So they wanted food. They wanted a particular type of food. And she said, no, we are going to have this. I said, why? Give them what they want. She said, no, sir. I need to train them well. I said, what are you training them to? She said, they must understand that they must not get everything they want. I said, that is the error. You were raised that way. Please, I don't want you to raise your children that way. You are working here because you needed to change this. You must let the children know that they can get whatever good thing that they want. They want this food, go and give it to them. I forced her to do it. When I told her the thing she was doing to her children, her eyes popped open. She started thinking about it. I said, yes. Give them what they want. If you feel that your children are asking for junk, tell them why you're not going to give it to them. That if you eat this food, you will not have stamina, you will not have energy, you will not grow properly. I want you to eat food that gives you strength, that makes you feel capable of doing anything you want to do. Don't eat nonsense. You are my child. I give back to you with intention. And that intention is for you to get the best in life. Therefore, this food you are craving is not good for you. Eat this instead. This idea of making it look as if I'm your mother, I must tell you what you want, without giving reasons, without negotiating, without interacting with your children, it's not good. You are beating them down. Children are meant to learn and they learn very fast. Teach them the right things with the right wisdom. If you don't have the wisdom, ask. The world is a school, it will teach you. So if you came from that background where every time you needed something, you don't get it because they tell you that is not how life is. You are going to grow into an adult who still kept that mentality, that definition of life, that's when you will have a high frequency. Because high frequency is a product of truth. If the truth of your life is forced to reality, Therefore, the spillover of that is that you are going to be on the low frequency. Why should you keep the old definition for your life? Or you had a background of abuse that's even worse than what we are talking about now. They have told you you are not good enough, you are a nobody, you won't amount to anything. Probably when you grew up, certain children were elevated above you. They said those ones were better than you because your parents were not available in that space. All your parents was like, like a house help who has children coming to the house and she's telling them you can't do this because you are not equal because you don't always get what you want that's a lie and i made sure that the children of this lady are on equal terms with me as long as it doesn't matter how young they are i play with them i treat them as my equals because i want them to grow that sense of self-worth if i play with them. I make them feel that they are my equals. When they meet other people outside, they will not feel that they are superior to them. 
And this is one thing I learned from my father, although I took it to the extreme when I was growing up. I never came across any man that made my father bend, that made my father feel small. Because my father was always a winner by my observations and everything, and my father was on an equal term with me, he never shouted me down anything. There was even a time I got really angry with him and I walked out on him with anger, went to the wall, I started punching the wall in anger. He just watched me and calmed down. He called me to his room and said, Son, for you to act the way you acted last night, it showed that you really were angered by what I said. And it is not the first time you are behaving like this. If you feel that what I have done to you or said to you is wrong, and you don't want to tell me, but I thought I'd make it easy for you to talk to me, why can't you write? You can write and say to me, I'll read it. And then I will apologize. What is it? You know, he called me, he talked to me one-on-one, -on -one, and I was feeling very ashamed. I was feeling very small now, saying, look at this man who made big men, other men, cry in his office. You know, they come to beg, and here is he bringing himself to my level. If I, for that action alone of coming down to talk to me, it just doused all my anger. I became very comfortable with my action and I apologized to him. I told him it did not happen again. And that was the last time my father and I had a friction. He said, if you feel that I have angered you, talk to me, come to me and talk to me. That is a father. That's how parents behave. The parents that just frown around the house, scream at people and make people feel small, make their children feel small. Those children will never feel equal to any person out there. And there was never a time I met any man, be you a governor, be you a president, that I felt small before them. Never. What I will always say is that, is this one more than my father? If I'm one with my father, so who is he? And I went to the point where I didn't tend to respect other men anyway, but I learned that in a hard way. When he died, and I was not alone, also because there is no problem you will be in that my father cannot bring you out of. First of all, he will bring you out of it and I'll find out what did you do. Why did you do it? And he would deal with you on his own. But he will save you first. He was not called a law man for nothing. He was very, very influential. I grew up with that confidence, with that confidence level. And it went to the other extreme of arrogance. But I had to caution myself. When he died, I started cutting my tail. <laughs> I started cutting my excesses. I started learning. You see, at the end of the day, the old definition that your parents gave you about life, if you don't change them, that is if, if they are not optimum, if they are not pro-life, if they are not pro-power. If you don't change them, the realities of life will show to you that you are not worthy of life. And then when you get to that point, it will give you that low frequency. People who are diffident, who approach life with a sense of diffidence, are always at the low ebb, at the low level of the frequency. You need to change that. Then the other thing, which is also part of the discussion of negative definition of life is that you believe that it is the things that you do that determine your value and that the things that you have you are able to acquire determine your value there is an example of this nature you see your friends you know maybe you've lived your life cut out from from girls especially those guys who went to all male schools they never had the opportunity to interact with the females and when they see females, they just feel strange. And they don't have sisters in their family. Something like, I don't know how they get there. But I just know that there are some guys who just don't feel worthy in the midst of women. They don't just feel comfortable. They can't talk. They might be orators. But when they are in the midst of women, especially the women that are beautiful, that are of class by their standard, they lose their tongues. They lose their flow. Such people, they will never ever really be able to attract because somehow they have been made to understand that they are not of value. They are not good enough for the ladies of their choice. Therefore, when they marry, they will end up marrying ladies beneath them. When they date, they will always date ladies beneath them. It's the other way for the ladies too. Okay? Now, until you change that and understand, some of them will not come to the point of saying, when I start working at earn money and I have things, I will be able to attract this kind of ladies. It is a lie. We will never be able to because it is your vibe that the ladies feel. Once a lady feels that your vibe is saying that you are not good enough, they will give you a distance. Somehow, they will not pick that language from you, but they will pick the energy of you're not being good enough. 
and they will see you as not good enough. Life responds to you by the energy you feed it. Animals do the same thing. When they see you, your attitude towards them, they will know how they respond to you. Of course, animals are still very, more, very, very primordial. They are at that level where they respond to feelings. They, they gauge feelings more than we do. So, be careful. Change your beliefs about life and your frequency will heighten. What are these beliefs? Like I said, what you have will never add value to you. Never. You have to have that sense of value by creating it internally. You don't need material things to create it because it is an emotive thing. It's an emotional thing. It is a mental thing. You cannot use material things because the material things you see are waste products of the metal. Okay? So you cannot use it. It's like you using feces to construct a human being. It's not possible. You can't use feces to construct a human being. In the same way, people are trying to use cars houses, laptops, computers, aircraft, private jets, yachts, whatever, to build up their self-esteem. It's not possible. It's not going to happen because all those things are manifestation of metal energies. And those manifestations are physics. They are outdated as they come out. They can never build your self-esteem. You have to have the self-esteem first. Some want to build their self-esteem by association with people that have high self-esteem. Well, if you don't go to those people, when you go to such people, you become slaves to them. You start getting so attached to them, thinking that you want to build up your value by having them. They will look down on you. And if they are not positive people, they will use you. If they are positive people, they start teaching you. That will help you. So change your sense of self. In changing your sense of self, remember always that you don't add value by adding material things. You don't add value by being associated with certain people, certain class of girls, no, or certain class of guys, no. You don't add value by doing certain things. Like in secondary school days, they say if you can go and kiss that girl, I'll know that you're a real top guy. And these guys go and they kiss the girl and you get beat the hell out of them. Okay? You don't do such things. Your life is value enough, respect it. Your life is the idea of the supreme. Isn't that enough for you to feel high all the time? And then the other one is that you feel that what you have done are bad and that they define you in the sight of God. That you are not worthy of certain things. I'm telling you now today that those things you thought you did, you didn't do them. Mind did them on the basis of data that the environment fed into it. The only problem is that you were not on guard to stop those data from manifesting. That's your only crime. You are not a doer. So, once you have committed an offense, you've done something nasty or untidy, move beyond it. Move beyond it. You are not the emotions rolling on your inside. They are in your system. It's not you are above them. How can I say this to make it really sink in? You are not what you do. Therefore, what you do cannot heighten your frequency. Neither can it reduce your frequency. You must live beyond what you do. You are not what you have. What you have is a byproduct of your metal energy so those byproducts are already wastes if as you know they waste as they spend time somebody was telling me last night oh i owe her the latest prado i love if you go and see the prado of 1990 you will know what i'm talking about i remember those days in the 90s when pathfinder was the eighty. somebody posted a picture of that pathfinder i was shocked at how it looks. You watch movies where they show old cars. Imagine when you were a child, when you saw those cars, consider how you see them now. Material things are spent as they are manifested. They start losing their values. You, as a human being, your value is supposed to grow because you are the idea of the eternal. Therefore, your value ameliorates with time. Don't reduce your value by your negative thinking. If you come to the understanding that your sins, your misbehaviors, don't define you in the sight of the source, what is that that will bring your frequency down? The other thing that brings frequency down is when you are not living the life that you truly are. You create a false face before the world. Then you are consistently watching out so that they don't find you out on your act. That can be really, be really reductive. 
There are people who cannot stand in front of the mirror because they are not true to themselves. Please stay true to yourself and you will have higher frequency. The frequency is the truth about your life. It doesn't lie. That's just the reality. So, that is it. On this channel, we say things, we reveal things that will grow your human equity. It's not as if your human equity can be grown, but we are saying that it will elevate you to match your human equity. You grow above the level of the flesh, you grow above the level of the mind, and you begin to approach your true humanity. That is the purpose. So if you find our videos, especially this one, useful, instructive, please, my friend, pass it on, share it. And if you have any questions that you want to ask, or you have something you want to say about this discussion, please put them on the comment section. I will be too grateful to respond. It is well with you. You are blessed. And you are a blessing. You don't know how much. Precious. You really are. But you are indefinable until you define yourself. I would rather that you define yourself solidly, beautifully. That is your goal in life. Thank you.